Quantum tunneling was first discussed by Friedrich Hund in 1927 in a series of papers about the theory of molecular spectra. It is defined as the quantum mechanical effect in which particles have a finite probability of crossing an energy barrier or transitioning through an energy state normally forbidden to them by classical physics due to the wave-like aspect of particles. The probability wave of a particle represents the probability of finding the particle in a certain location, and there is a finite probability that that particle is located on the other side of the barrier. So what does this all mean? Let's look at some examples to gain a better understanding of quantum tunneling. Here is the first example of quantum tunneling. There is a particle, and to its right, a barrier. Quantum physics says that there is a large probability the particle will be on the left side of the barrier, with a small probability the particle will be on the right side of the barrier. But the fact that the particle can be on the right side of the barrier without crossing the barrier is what quantum tunneling is. After applying Schrodinger's equation, which is used to estimate the probability of a particle's location, the probability of the particle being on the left is this line. For the particle being in the barrier, it is represented by this line, essentially an exponential decay function, where the probability drops quickly, but is not zero. Then here is the probability for the particle being on the right side of the barrier, where it is fairly small, but still not zero. Although the probability is small, quantum tunneling ultimately tells us that it is possible for the particle to exist on the right side of the barrier. Here is a human in a wall. Quantum tunneling cannot be applied here. And this is because, as the mass of an object attempting to cross a barrier increases, it ultimately decreases the probability of the human crossing to the right side of the wall. This is a perfect example that tells us that the quantum phenomena only applies for small particles. Basically, the only way for the person to cross the wall is to dig an actual tunnel. Here is the second example for quantum tunneling. Here we have a person rolling a ball down a slope, approaching a mountain, but it does not have enough energy to reach the peak of the mountain roll in order for it to continue to roll. For the ball to ultimately roll down the mountain, it needs to reach a certain amount of energy to get over the barrier. Applying the quantum world onto this example, there lies a high probability that when the ball is rolled, it will stay on the left side of the mountain, and a small probability that the ball will end up on the right side of the mountain. But just like the particle on the barrier, there is in fact a chance the ball can end up on the right side of the mountain because of quantum tunneling. The first and second examples are just an analogy, but let's look at a real life example. You may not know this, but quantum tunneling is also applicable to fusion on the sun. The sun undergoes a process called nuclear fusion, where hydrogen atoms fuse together to form helium atoms. This fusion process emits a huge amount of energy. Nuclear fusion between these hydrogen atoms cannot occur unless it is in a very hot environment. The sun's internal temperature is estimated to be at around 15 million kelvins. Ultimately, this temperature doesn't create enough energy to overcome the barrier of repulsion between the hydrogen atoms. But the theory of quantum tunneling tells us otherwise. Quantum tunneling on nuclear fusion of the sun tells us that there's a small probability that it can overcome the barrier of repulsion. Knowing this and understanding that multiple hydrogen atoms are attempting to undergo nuclear fusion with one another, these small chances ultimately add up, meaning nuclear fusion happens all the time on the sun. I hope these examples were helpful and that you have gained a better understanding of quantum tunneling. This video was created by Stephanie Moses, Darren Kwan, and Victoria Mon for their quantum chemistry class taught by Christine Isborn at UC Merced. Thanks for watching.